Hello everyone and welcome back! In this new lesson we are going to implement our first reactive form. We are going to start with a simple login form that contains only an email and password field. Later on in the course we are going to build a much more complex form with multiple steps, all sorts of different form controls, we are going to learn how to build custom form controls that also support form validation, we are going to learn how to do a synchronous validation using backend calls that validate parts of our form, we are going to learn how to do custom form controls, we are going to learn file upload with reactive forms and much more. But right now all we want to do is to create one simple reactive form and compare it with its template driven version. So let's get started by defining the form model. Now in a template driven form such as this one we can see that the model of the form is defined here via these directives. We are applying here ng-model, we are defining a name for a control and this is going to define a form with multiple form fields. So this is a template driven form. In reactive forms all of the form model is defined programmatically at the level of the component class and then we're going to link the form model into the template. So then let's switch back here to our component class of our reactive form and let's define the form model. The first thing that we need to define is the form itself. Let's then go ahead and define here a new property called form which is going to be of type form group. Now this property is currently undefined so let's go ahead and let's assign it a value. We are going to call here the form group constructor and we're going to pass it a configuration object. This object takes in as keys the name of the multiple form controls. So for example in the case of our login form one of the form fields is going to be the email and another field is going to be the password. Now the values of these properties are the form controls. Let's create here a new form control for the email and we're going to do that by using here the form control class. We need to define here an initial value for the email, let's define here the empty string as that initial value and let's do the same here for our password. Let's also define it with an initial empty string value. And with this we have defined the model for our first reactive form. Now let's define a couple of basic validation rules for each of the form fields. So take for example the case of the email field. We would like to make it mandatory and we would like to make it respect the format of an email. If you remember in our template driven form we did that by applying here a couple of directives here to our form control that added certain validation rules. For example the required property made the input email mandatory and other properties such as email is going to make sure that the input follows the email format. We can add validators in a similar way to our reactive form. So here at the level of our form control we can pass in a configuration object and inside it we can define a couple of properties, one of them being the validators. So this property is going to take in here an array of validators. Let's then go ahead and let's add here the required validator and let's also add here the email validator. Let's now do something similar here to the password field. So here we are also going to be adding a couple of validators. We are going to make this field mandatory by applying here the required validator and we are also going to be defining a minimum length for the password. So the password needs to have at least 8 characters. And with this we have defined here a couple of fields and their corresponding validators. And we have done all of this programmatically here at the level of the component. Our template is still in its initial state. All the logic has been defined at the level of the component which creates great separation of concerns and makes sure that our templates are kept clean and free of business logic. Now all we have to do is to link the template to the component. 
So here we have a form element. We need to bind it somehow here with the form group that we have defined here, which is this property called form. So in order to bind here this form group to our template, we're going to be using here a new reactive forms directive called form group. And we're going to assign here the value of the form that we want to link it to. In this case, it's the property named form in our component. Now notice that this directive that we have here is part of the Angular reactive forms module. So if you want to make this directive available in your application, and if you want to build reactive forms in general, then in the root component of your application, you need to add the following import here in our application module. You need to add here the reactive forms module that we see here. So the forms module is for template driven forms and the reactive forms module is for reactive forms. So now here going back to our template, we have linked this form to our form group. And now we need to define to which control this input field corresponds to. So we can do so by applying here the form control name directive and we're going to pass it a string. The string contains the name of the control that we want to link this input to. So here, going back to our component, this is going to be the email control. In a very similar way, we want to link the password control here to this second input field. So let's go ahead and apply here form control name and let's link it to the password control. We are now almost ready to see this initial version of our reactive form in action. Let's go ahead and let's add here a small div where we are going to print out to the screen the value of the form. So we are going to define here a new div called form value and inside it we are going to print out the value of the form that we can access here via our form group property. So here we have all the usual properties of a form, including its value and validity state. Besides the value, let's make a second copy here of this debugging div that we are adding to the form just for demonstration purposes. And let's also add here the validity state of the form. So as you can see in a reactive form, the template remains very clean. All we have is a form group directive for defining the whole form and form control name directives in order to link each of the input components to a given form control. So here we are linking two HTML inputs, but this could also be custom form controls, such as, for example, a date picker, a drop down, or even our own custom form controls that we're going to learn how to write later on in the course. Before trying this out, in order to be able to visualize the form value, let's go ahead and let's apply it here, the Angular Core JSON pipe, so that we have a properly formatted output. And with this, we are now ready to try out our first reactive form. Let's switch here to a larger window and let's see the new value of our form. Remember, you can reach this screen by clicking here on the side menu, login menu entry. So let's start interacting with the form. We can see here that the initial value contains empty strings for both fields, and we can see that the value is initially false. If we now interact with our first field and we click away from it, we're going to see that the field is marked in red, meaning that it does not contain a valid value. If we inspect here our template, we are going to see that all of the normal form classes that we have explained before, like ng pristine, ng invalid, ng touched, they are all being applied correctly to our input. We can also see that the same CSS classes are being applied to our full form. So this is equivalent functionality to what we have already seen with template driven forms. If we now start interacting here with the email field by typing in a valid email, we are going to see that as we type, the value of the form is getting updated. Now let's switch here to the password field. If we click away from it, we can see that this is also being validated according to the validation rules that we have defined in our form model. If we go ahead and we start adding here new characters to our password, at a given moment, we are going to reach the minimum length required and the 
whole validity value of the form is going to switch from false to true, meaning that the form contains valid values for all the fields. And with this, we now have our first reactive form up and running. As you can see, going back here to our program, this way of creating forms is very different from template-driven forms. In this form flavor, there are minimal directives applied to the template, and the template is kept for view logic only. All of the model of our form is defined in an explicit programmatic way here at the level of our component. Reactive forms scale a lot better in complexity. It's a lot easier to build complex enterprise scale forms using reactive forms when compared with template driven forms. We are going to learn exactly why later on in the course as we implement a much more complex form than this one. Right now, let's continue the development of this simple reactive form until we reach an equivalent set of features than what we have implemented here in our template-driven form. And we are going to compare the two final versions.